Welcome back to the Gusky. I am Gray, and today we have another Finnish First Division match for you. This is at home again against JJK. This is another one of those matches that honestly is favorable to us because they're way down at the very bottom of the table. They're the worst team in the division. And that's about it. Um, while while we were away in between matches, we had a training injury to Hinkula. Um, that kind of throws a fucking wrench in our plans. Quite honestly. Um, I don't know any other way to describe that. Shit, it sucks. Um, we are missing Owusu for this match. Uh due to suspension because he's picked up enough yellow cards, yada, yada, yada. Not a big deal. Um, is we got Hananen who can come in and, you know, perform the same roles that he was performing in midfield. Um, so, yeah, that really screws us. Um, I think what we're going to do is hag blum it up, and put Nermela out there at a defensive midfielder spot, and hope things go right. On the bright side, Granholm is... Um, Gronholm's healthy, and so is Arins. Oh, yeah, I just noticed that right now. Arins did not take an injury, take on an injury. So that's, that's good. That's good. I'm happy with that. Um, it seems to be a bit injury-prone, quite honestly. Um, I haven't really even checked that on the, the editor or anything like that. So I, I haven't really used it for this file at all, actually, yeah. Usually I use it just to check out some hidden stats and just do shit like that because I'm nosy. You know, and I like to look at stuff like that. A lot of people call it cheating. I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> Quite honestly. I mean, there's like 17 million factors that still go in to winning a match. So no matter what you fucking do, you know, with the editor, it's not going to really change much. I mean, it's still, you know, like I said, there's still 19,000 factors that go into winning a match. And 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 just because you use the editor to get a hand, you know, the, I guess, you know, a, a, a one up, you know. The only thing I could really see as cheating is going in and changing all your player stats so that they're you know world class footballers. It's the only thing. I mean, I won't ever do that because I don't like that. I mean, I've I've done that in video games and stuff like that, and then yeah, I feel I don't I feel weird about it. I don't like it. But anyway, that's enough of me getting on my soapbox while I entertain you during the um during the save screen. But anyway, we're gonna get this underway. Um, well, as I said before, we should win this. I'm not too upset having missing Hinkala for this match. He is out for like three to four weeks, by the way. With a chest injury while lifting weights. A little punk-ass bitch needs to quit pulling muscles. Um, because he's kind of like the only defender that we have that's not like 30-something. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's see. What should we go with? I'm gonna go with that. There we go. Someone at least seems motivated. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much where I'm at right now, um, although I have, I have changed, um, I have changed some things in the game, and I might actually do this for this save file, just because, um, in, in this game, I don't believe, like, okay, let me explain this to you, like, every country has their own, like, youth rating, which, what that does is that determines how many good players come out of that country. For example, Spain and Germany have high youth ratings, whereas countries like Hungary, um, Republic of Ireland is actually one of them, Iceland, have really lower, much, much lower youth ratings. And um, they're on a scale of 1 to 200, by the way. Everything's kind of like a D20 system in this game, which I actually enjoy a lot. Um, it's very even. And I like the percentages that it presents. Um... Anyway, uh, oh Jesus, I do not like the build-up that's, that's kind of, that they're putting together here. This is like, okay, thank you. What is that, Nermela coming in and tackling that away? Anyhow, um, what the team, what the youth rating does is it doesn't matter how good your club is. Like, your club could have an amazing youth setup. You could have an amazing recruitment setup, but it won't really affect the type of players that you bring in, you won't be able to bring in the same amount of players. Like let's let's just say once again, like here in Iceland, you have a world class club in Iceland, and you have the best training facilities, the best youth recruitment, the best everything that you can possibly have to generate your own youth, and you still will not generate as many 
youth players as a like a mid club, like a mid division club, or even like a mid table club in Spain or Germany because they don't have the youth system. In other words, it just means there's more good players to go around. You'll still generate a few of those really good players, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily world class, but you know really good quality players. You know, that can play in that can play in, in uh you know, like the Champions League, but you still won't be able to like come up with like three or four of them like fucking Real Madrid can. It's you know, it's ridiculous. But anyway, what I was why I was mentioning that is I might go and change that for some countries just to kind of vary it up a bit because the game, to my knowledge, does not kind of cycle through that, which, you know, if you look at football historically, man, I do not like the way we're defending right now. If you look at the game historically, um, you know, football kind of goes in cycles. I mean, they always talk about golden generations. I, you know, like they've been talking about that for like the Ivory Coast for the last few years. They've been talking about their golden generation, them coming of age you know, where they have a good crop of players that all kind of come in at the same time. You go through cycles like that, you know. Um, very few countries, I wouldn't even say Spain, can do this. They, they can't have world-class, World Cup winning teams every time out. You know, you're going to have cycles where you have a good crop of players and a good crop of really good world-class players. And then there's going to be down years. There's going to be a decade or so where players just aren't, they're going to be good, but they're just not going to be that world-class. And... Like I said, to my knowledge, the game does not cycle through like that. And like I said, in my honest opinion, the game goes through like through that. Like I said, Ivory Coast is a big example. Spain is an obvious example. You know, they had their golden generation that peaked, you know, not at this last World Cup, but the one prior to that. And even the Euros, you can even say that, you know. But now you look at the players that are coming into that squad, they still have a lot of aging players. And no real, you know, no obvious alternatives or heirs to the throne in terms of their, their youth that are coming in to, to the Spain setup. You know, there's a lot of good players, yes, but none that, you know, are on that quote-unquote level. And that's kind of like, that's kind of the thing that I was, you know, that's I'm mentioning in here. I mean, it's, it, it may be something where I go through and just for the hell of it, just to change things and just so I see something other than a flood of Spanish players, you know, come into the game. I mean, they're still going to be good Spanish players because you got good clubs with good recruiting programs in there. So you're not going to lose out on them. But I may go in there and, like, raise some of the stats for, like, Hungary. So, like, Hungary comes up with a decent, you know, crop of players. In fact, that's another example. You know, if you look back historically, Hungary had a great um, international team back in the 80s. So, um, I think it's the 80s. Um, I could be wrong. I may not know exactly what I'm talking about at all. But you get the hint. I mean, I actually had a... When I first played this game on FM12, I had a really good crop of South African players. You know, that helped me get to where I, to where that club was, you know, a big influence in Europe and shit like that. And that, and that's, like I said, that's really what, you know, I, I prefer to see, you know, you're just going to see things like that. I mean, it makes the game interesting, makes scouting more fun because then you go out and you see like, oh shit, there's a couple of players here in this country that are coming out. Maybe I should keep an eye on South Africa, see if they continue you know, see if I can jump on some of those kids early and have, you know, a good crop, you know, a good piece of that pie, in other words, you know, like I said, it makes it, it makes it exciting to me, other than, other, you know, otherwise you're just going to be stuck in the same routines of, you know, recruiting in the exact same countries and looking for players in the exact same countries every year. Like I said, that to me, when there's no variability, is kind of boring and bland, and quite honestly takes the fun out of scouting, for me, anyway. But, um, so like I said, that may be something where I go through and create, you know, just change things. Just, ooh, Hananen. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. How in the hell does the goalkeeper get back that fast? Holy shit. But anyhow, like I said, that may be something that I decide to go and mess with. Just, just to, just to make things a little different. Like I said, I mean, it's not like Spain or Germany or, you know, whoever is going to stop making, you know, good players. It's just there's going to be a potential for good players from other lesser-known countries. But that is what it is. I mean, and, and, and quite honestly, like, there's, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, for me, there's a lot of pride when you do find, like, that one player that, you know, um, you know, that, that's from a country that doesn't make very good players very often. And you find that one guy, you know, and, I don't know. I mean, I like that sort of shit, you know. But I mean, I also don't like having a ton of players from once again well-established 
football in countries just because I like that. I'm saying I like that variability. I like having players from Georgia and, you know, the Czech Republic, you know, in Slovenia and, you know, <laughs> Ukraine, as well as, you know, a couple of Spanish kids. But, you know, like I said, or Argentinians. I, I have had some good Argentinians and Uruguayans in my day, but... Those also tend to come because of the way the game is. They come at a pretty high price. Same thing with Belgians. I don't know why Belgians come at such a high price. It's weird. Also, one thing I've noticed in this game, at least on my Galway file, all the Belgian players come at an egregiously high price. And they don't seem to have any professionals, meaning they may have all the talent in the world and the potential to be the best player in the world, but they can never seem to apply that shit. It's fucking weird. I don't know what their bias against Belgian players and, like, not putting forth the effort into training and shit like that, but that seems to be, that seems to be a thing. Because, like I said, I keep finding players that just have, like, oh, shit, this player's going to be good, and it's like, oh, yeah, but he has no professionalism, meaning he'll, he'll be unable to ever reach his potential. It's weird. But anyhow, hopefully that sheds a little insight on some of the inner workings in the game. Why are we contributing to so much... I wouldn't say possession, but so much attacking threat over here and absolutely have nothing to show for it. Ah, Christ. If, you, if you're looking at our uh, our team ratings down here, they're not they're not very good. Our, our offense, our attackers here are letting us down quite a bit. Oh, Ricin. And that's a dangerous spot there. Right right there, I don't care how many players are there, just, just try and shove that in on goal because if you do that, you know, you at least have a chance at maybe taking a deflection and scoring. I mean, that's just that's just me. I mean, that's you know, I mean, the worst the worst that can come out of that situation where Reisner was was to have them clear the ball off the line, which we will most likely have players in place to collect it anyway, and we would still retain possession. That's just that's just me. Instead of passing it back like that to the guy in the corner and trying, you know, to put in another corner, basically. Like I said, I don't... I don't really like that. I, I wish, once again, oh boy. Ooh. Oh, just a little too deep on the cross there. We would, we would have a goal if we could have pulled that back just a little bit. This is kind of disappointing, quite honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be pretty upset if we drop points here. I mean, this is where we really don't want to drop points. Of course, it'll put us on 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 par with FC Haka, which I think we no we play Yippo next. This a should be an, oh boy oh boy. <laughs> um not quite sure what we want to do about this because we kind of well due to suspensions and players being injured. Oh. Okay. Due to suspensions and players being um you know, injured. We really don't have much, uh, much, op much for options in that. Oh, really? Fuck. I'm sure this is already up there, but I'm gonna go. Yeah, that's what I figured. Just looking at the foul count now, I wasn't really paying attention, and that accounts for all the fucking cards that we, that we got. But Chirala didn't get one there. I thought he would, but we can take, we can take. Ron home off, I think. And we got Michaela over there. Yeah, see, we just don't have much for... Hmm. I'm not sure what I want to do here. Well, we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it right now and see where that takes us. Because we don't have once again we don't have Uusu out there, or we don't have him on the bench even because he's serving his suspension, so we can't really kind of jumble our our um our midfield around. Oh boy. We're creating opportunities like this and then we're just not finishing it off. And that's a long shot I really don't want him to take. Mm. Alright yeah, I think we're gonna pull the trigger on uh Ose here. Put in Michaela and see if that see if that sparks anything. I mean, we're doing decent defensively. I mean, honestly, since that first floor to open the game, that first 25 minutes, you know, we they haven't really, um, 
they haven't really uh, posed much of a threat. Of course, now that I say that, they're probably going to you know, run right out down here and score. Especially since we're moving away. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Jesus Christ. Had two players running towards the ball and two players running into the box. And then one man to mark them. Yeah. That's uh, supremely disappointing. We're having some real trouble finding um, finding the back of the net right now. That's pretty uh, pretty concerning. I, mean, I guess we can hope. Best we can hope for right now is for Viking it to to um, come on. Thank you for not giving Hagelin a fucking card. Anyhow, um, no, we can't seem to get out of our own end, can we? Jesus. Uh, seems we, uh, seems we lost all that momentum there. Okay, there we go. That was a bit frightening. Can we get to some highlights where we have the ball? Thank you. This is probably just us turning it over to, you know, and I should probably do something here. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to take ground home off and put a reds on. Because I have a sneaky suspicion that he's either going to get another card or get injured. Considering he just came back from injury. That's kind of one of the things they like to do with you. You kind of you kind of got to watch that. Been, I've been victimized by that too many times. Oh, no. oh Jesus, why do you just stop right there? I hate that shit. I hate that shit. I don't know if that's them, like, I don't know if that's part of that, like, the first touch thing, them not being able to, oh my god, somebody. Holy shit, how did that not fucking go in? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, fuck. You get it. Okay. It's, it's the substitution. Jesus, that's irritating. Oh, just don't stop running. You gotta move off the ball. We gotta work on that. We gotta work on our, um... I knew I should've done that instead of attacking set pieces. I knew I should've done listen to my assistant coach. <laughs> Never listen to those assholes. Let's say, here, uh, work on our attacking set pieces against these guys. When your team really needs to work on something else, we need to work on our attacking movement. That's what we need to work on. Because you're, start, you're, you're starting to see them make runs, but not finish them fully. And the passes are there, but the runs just aren't. So you need to start, you know, when you start seeing that, like that right there, too. I mean, when the pass, when the run is there and the pass is not, you start seeing that disconnect. Oh, come on, somebody's got to finish this shit. Jesus. That angle, uh, that wasn't the best thing to try and score from, but... Yeah, well, it looks like we're destined to, to fall flat here again. That's kind of a oh, rice and Jesus. That's kind of a it's kind of the theme of this season. We can't seem to really get get. Oh come on, Jesus! I don't know how we got over that one. Oh boy, can't seem to really get a hold on the, the season, but. Uh, a lot of that, as I said before, oh Jesus, thank you, Hananen. A lot of this, a lot of our inconsistency issues are, are, are my fault because of the, you know, us implementing so many different formations. Um, although, you know, like I said, I mean, it, I, I honestly believe, like I said, even though they'll, they'll say that they've, they're entirely fluid with these formations, I honestly believe that it takes a few years for them to really get it ingrained and for them to really work fluidly to the point that when you're in a, when you're in a game like this where things are dragging on and you're not very good, you still have some of that basic instinct, you know, that you know where to be at certain times with the formation so that you can, you know, you kind of create your own luck. And, um, you know, you find a way to grind out results like this. Where it doesn't have to be super pretty. But, you know, like I said, where people make those runs, make those passes. That because they've been playing in the formation for so long. It's kind of a hidden thing, in my honest opinion. I, I really do believe it. 
that you know there's there's it it takes a while it takes at least one full season for your team to understand the formation and understand you know your playing style what you expect and shit like that you know especially like i said the first season is always the toughest because because the players don't respond very well to your team talks you don't have like a reputation i mean it's and that's one of the things that i think i do pretty well Bryson, and that was a dangerous tackle. Got a ball, though. It's one of the things that I feel like I do well. I think I do pretty well with the team talks. I, I think I can, you know. But like I said, it they're not ver, they're not very effective until you've been there for a while and you have some credibility yourself as a manager. And come on, man. oh my god, what the hell was that? Seriously, how did you fucking trip him? Good God. Like, what was the fucking point in that? You had fucking... Uh, fucking Ryson and coming over there to cover. Oh, Jesus. He's gonna turn and shoot. Oh. Oof. That was, a, that was a little scary there. I thought that shot was gonna have a lot more venom and spiked on it than it did. But... I like Arenz's, uh size over there. I don't know if you notice how much bigger he is compared to other players. But I, I like his size. I like his size over there as a as a wing wing player. And that's also well, that's a lot down to you know us not being very good in the um, in, in the air. And size size helps a little bit, even though you, you may not have the you may not have the the jumping ability or the aerial prowess of other players. Size can get you can get you uh, pretty far. Don't do something stupid, your man. You want my senior player. Oof. Oh, you got, yeah. You got runners. Oh, even better. And not enough on it. Yeah. It's, those little, it's that little thing right there that everything was okay up until it just, just didn't put just, it just barely under hit that a little bit. That last pass away off. Let me get the 1 0 win. I'm okay with that. I like the. I like the clean sheet. I'll take the clean sheet any day, any fucking day. Um, but yeah, next match we are definitely we are definitely working on. Uh, we are definitely working on our um, our attacking movement. That's like I said. That's that's a lot. That's that's something like I said. You, you got to look for those little things like that. I mean, it it takes it takes practice. You can't just jump into these games and just automatically know what you need to look for. You know, but like I said, when you start seeing those passes that are almost there, that are the runs that they start to run and then they stop, you know, and shit like that, those are the things that you start you start seeing after a while. And yeah, like I said, like with the familiarity, I I'm not uh, I'm not entirely convinced. We do have yeah. See, we're not even we're not even up to speed on these. And yeah, like I said, you take a look at that, the passing style, creative freedom. We're pretty pretty well ahead on that. But it's the formation that you're kind of not quite used to. But like I said, that'll that'll come in time, and hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully. I know next season we're gonna be we're gonna be a lot better. And since we have a defensive formation too, we can probably probably we are likely to be able to sit and and um, really hold out against bigger teams. Granted, as long as we get defenders, and that's something too. Um, this is absolutely evil, and I hate when clubs do this. However, um, we will be poaching players from whatever team goes down if we happen to go up. Just saying. We will be all over that shit. Usually those guys come at a cut price and are of the quality that you need at, um, at the next level. However, we will be fighting all the other teams that are at the next level for those players as well because they're looking to get those players that are on the losing team on the cheap. Hopefully, like I said, we can find some hidden gems there, and someone can, uh, and, and we can have someone uh, really bolster our defense. But anyhow, that does it for this episode. That was a quick episode too. Come to think of it, that game, kind of, kind of flew by. But anyhow, if you made it this far on YouTube, you know what to do. Thanks a lot for watching. Yada 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 yada. Like, subscribe, all that good shit. Bye.